in this case, I think these blips that we've got are good sounds for when the ball bounces against something. So I'm going to use the ball script to generate these little blip sounds. So let's go and take a look at that. So in our ball script, we want to play the sound when the ball collides against something. So that's pretty simple. We know how to do that. Uh, on collision, enter. And technically here we do get a collision object, but we're not going to use it. I guess I may as well you know, do that for, for the heck of it. But we're not going to use this. We are going to play a blip at this point. So how do we do that? Well, first we need to have access to our sound clips. And we're going to do that one of the best ways for our purposes is going to be to have a public um, oops, audio clip array called blips. Or, you know, maybe I'll do a blip audio. That, that looks pretty good to me. If we switch back to Unity, and now we look at our ball prefab over here, in our script, we should have blip audio over here. And it does have a little pull down tab, and it's an array. So we're going to set the array size to be three and we're going to drop the three blip sounds into those three slots. Of course, they didn't have to make it an array if there was just a single blip, but this will demonstrate the great inspector UI for, for working with arrays. I love doing this sort of thing. So now blip audio will reference three audio clips. Now that we've got the clips, how do we actually play them? There's two major ways to play this. We could attach a audio source object to our ball, just like we did in the previous video with the cube. And then we could do some magic to change which clip it's pointing to, and eh, this is starting to feel kind of awkward. And for these one-shot sounds, I feel that it's much better to use a one-shot function to pull it off. So I'm actually gonna call, I am gonna call audio source, but I'm gonna use play clip at point. This is a class function. It doesn't require an instance of an object. We do just have to reference a uh, an audio clip, which is gonna be fine. We're just gonna use blip audio, and we're gonna use the first one in the array for now. And then it also requires a 3D position. Now, we don't actually care where this is going to be played because this is a two-dimensional sound. It's not a 3D sound. Uh, so if it mattered where it was being played, then we would really put more thought into it. In this case, it doesn't. We may as well though, just for the heck of it, we're gonna give it our current, our ball's current position. We'll play from there, that sounds fine. Let's see what that does. I'll flip back over to Unity, we're gonna hit play. And there we go, it takes a second to compile everything. Again, everything seems to be working here. We'll launch the ball and there we go. Wow, isn't that amazing? Such great sound effects. I, you know, I should be a sound engineer for Hollywood. Clearly, I have exactly what it takes. This is actually maybe a little on the loud side. So let's turn down the volume a little. Uh, and the easiest way to do this with the technique that we have used is to just feed this a third parameter. It's a float for the volume and we'll just have it. I believe that is how we would have the volume. Let's give it a try. Hmm, still a tad on the loud side. Let's drop it a little further. Let's drop it a lot and see what happens. Just kind of want a subtle little bloop. There we go. You know what? Too little. And we want to... Let's bring it up to 0.25 and call it good. Now we do want to randomize what sound is being played. So instead of just playing the first blip audio, we are going to choose random from a range that goes from 0 to blip audio dot length. And close that. So now it'll return a number between zero and the length of this, uh, but minus one. So it will be from, uh, from zero to two. It'll return zero, one, or two, and that way it should play around random sound every time. Let's give that a try. Oops, this is supposed to be a capital L, isn't it? All right, Let's see what happens now. There we are. Oh, I like this. There we go. Now we have a high quality 1980s computer game. 
Now we also want to add some music, obviously, so let's go and do, deal with that next. So with music, we could do exactly what we did before. We could potentially put a little um, off-screen game object, an empty game object, just attach an audio clip to it and throw our music on there, or an audio source rather, put our music on there, make sure to turn it on loop, and then we'll have the same song that loops over and over. That might get a little bit repetitive. We could take more than one song, go into a, a sound editor like Audacity, and just string them together end to end, and then just loop through that. Then I'll play one song, then the other, then the other. It'll all be one big MP3, but then at least you will, you will get some variety. Or the other alternative is to do something kind of similar to what we did with the ball. Write a script that plays one clip, waits for it to finish, and then plays the next one, and the next one, and the next one from an array. Now, the basic examples that I see for doing something like that feel a little bit contrived. I'll go through it anyway, but I, I feel like there's probably a better way. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if the asset store or someone had designed some sort of script that was a proper, maybe a, like a jukebox manager type thing. But we'll, we'll build something very simple just to show the basics of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty game object, and I'm going to call this the music manager. And for this position doesn't matter, but I'm going to set it just off to the side here just so that I don't know, it's out of the way. It, feel, it feels better that way. So we have a music manager somewhere in here, and we are going to attach an audio source to this, like so. So it can play music, and um, we can attach a clip to it, but I'm not going to do that right off the bat. What I'm going to do is write a script. So let's create a new script, and I've just realized I moved my window accidentally. Nope, we're all right. I'm going to create a new script called Music Manager Script. Seems like a good name. We'll open that up. Oh, and before I go and edit that and then get frustrated later, we'll make sure to add the script to my Music Manager. Awesome. Why did it not open? Please be to opening my script. There we go. So this is going to have, let's say, another public audio clip array called uh, Songs. And this object is also going to have, this script is going to have an, an audio source. So we're going to actually cache that. We're going to call audio source and we'll just save that as audio. And we're going to make sure to grab it here. Audio equals get component audio source. And we are good to go. Now, if we check our music manager, got songs we will give it technically we'll give it two songs I only have the one song though so I'm gonna just throw it in there twice so now that we have everything we need let's let's just try to play a sound clip very simply because right now nothing will play because on our music manager we have oh we've actually got play on awake um, I don't think this is going to work maybe it will I don't think so because Right, it doesn't actually have a, an audio clip for one. So if we play this, no music. Now, we need to assign an audio clip at the minimum, so we'll do that here. Audio.clip, we're going to say, grab our songs, grab the first song, and assign that to the audio clip. And I'm actually curious right here to know if it's going to play that or not. I'm not 100% sure that it will. Nope, it will not. And I think the reason is, when it starts off, when it starts to play, it's like, oh, play on awake, great. Oh, I don't have an audio clip. I will immediately stop. So despite the fact that I assign it an audio clip later, it's not going to start playing. For confusion, I'm going to turn this off anyway just to keep it a little straighter in my head. And I am going to tell it to play this song manually through the script by doing that. And now let's give this a play and see what happens. There we go. We got our music. All right, let's turn this down here. It's a little bit on the loud side. Still pretty loud. All right, let's stop the game. But the, I think the sound, the song is great for this sort of arcadey type stuff. All right, so we're playing music. That's great. What happens when the song ends? Well, here's where we get to something interesting. I feel that there probably should be an event that fires off when the song ends, but at a, at a quick glance, I couldn't see it. What people seem to do, and again, this feels a little contrived, but I'm going to go for it anyway, is in your update, you can check to see if the audio is playing. Um, if audio dot is playing 
equals false, then we can do something. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and move it in here. So if there's no music playing, assign the first clip and then play the song. Let's try that. Perfect! So this is doing it in the update. And of course, again, we don't want to just play the first song. We want to go random.range from zero to songs songs.length and close that off and there we go so every time you play play a random song or actually that's probably not what we want at all we probably want to do something like uh, int current song equals zero and then we want to play the current song plus plus and uh, well you know I really like to do the increments inside of operations because it feels very cool and I don't know, whatever. Let, let's increment it outside. If current song is larger or equal to songs.length, then current song should be equal to zero. So we'll, we'll loop around. This way we'll play each song once and then come back. And if we give this a play, it should still be working. Perfect. Now we are getting a warning here. Oops, it was clearing on play. Let's uh, make a song, a little switch. What was that telling me? Music manager script.audio inherited member hides. Oh, I don't actually need to do this. I didn't realize this. The audio will automatically search for the appropriate component. Is that true? Ah, oh, well, there we go. We'll save a few lines of code. I don't like that it's unobvious, but audio will automatically be assigned based on the fact that this has an audio source. So this is enough. This is all we need to play. Have a little jukebox, and now we have a, ma a music loop. If we're worried about the volume, we can easily tweak it by just changing our audio source here. We can drop the volume down. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll drop it down to about 0.25 as well and see if that's a better volume for us. Might be a little too quiet. But there we have it. We can attach some additional sounds. Maybe when you pick up power up, something really exciting will play. But there we have it. Oh, this like great sort of like metal pounding sound in the back makes me feel like, you know, I don't think I want the brick theme anymore. I think I want these to be like metal ingots and and you know, in some sort of steel factory. We have like pouring slag in the back and yeah, a real industrial feel to it. You, you guys get that? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but uh, there we have it. Sound in the game. Uh, in future videos, we'll look at a couple of different things, such as uh, we'll actually look at third person and first person controllers in greater detail. And uh, whatever other topics people want, leave comments and I'll make some videos about whatever you want to look at. See you next time, folks.